of tonight's game of the ACC on ESPN. Louisville Cardinals at three and two in the ACC, 15 and three overall. Clemson comes in on a four game losing streak and that's part of the problem for the Tigers. Some close games for both teams. Clemson's taking the losses, Louisville the victories. The third, third league game or fourth league game that's come down to the last minute, we've only won one. Uh, you know, and that's, that's frustrating for all of us. We've been through the mill with a schedule and we, we stay at, at an even keel and keep getting up for every game as if it's a national championship game. And I like the effort that our guys give. That was the atmosphere of the Blockbuster on Saturday. They packed this place, 22,000 capacity. Louisville beat Duke 78-69, but it wasn't without some damage done. An injury to Quentin Snyder. He was injured on a layup attempt early in the second half of the game against Duke. Kept playing, but he is out two to three weeks. So Louisville, Dan Dockage, has to shape shift the lineup. 15 points a game his last four. Five assists, less than a turnover in his last four. And Quentin Snyder was playing as well as any point guard, along with Matt Farrell of Notre Dame, but in the ACC, he was terrific. Now you move VJ King in the lineup. You move Donovan Mitchell over to the point, and you play it from there and see what happens. See how many minutes you can get out of that group. We'll see how it plays tonight. Clemson at 11 and 6, Louisville 15 and 3. Our officials James Lucky, Michael Stevens, Jeffrey Anderson, and Clemson goes through this guy, the Ron Blossom game, the sixth leading scorer in the ACC. Everything revolves around him. Yeah, inside and outside. Has not shot the ball at all this year, like 15%. Isn't that amazing? He's a 45% right. shooter last year from three. It's 15% this year. And you saw he has a great stroke. The ball spins beautifully. He gets one in and out there. It's just been that kind of perimeter year for a player that is all ACC. Guy that was thinking about going to the NBA came back to work on his shot and it just has not worked out the way he wanted to. They get it inside to City Jete, the big guy with the first two. Hey, that was sweet. Grantham just flipped it into Jete like there was no defense. We hear all the time about the length of Louisville. They attacked it on the first possession as Mitchell creates for Mahmoud, but he traveled. That was a good call. I mean, look at this pass. This is just easy. Wow. Away from the defense. You don't throw the ball to your teammate. You throw the ball away from the defense. That was beautiful, and they need, they being Clemson, Jason, I think need to keep doing that, doing that, doing that. Welcome everyone who joined us from the Big Ten game between Maryland and Iowa. Close one went down the stretch and Maryland ended up taking the win in lovely Iowa City. 2-0 Clemson here becomes 4-0 as Dante Grantham has a 4-0 run for the Tigers. Too easy. Nobody came over to help. Grantham just one dribble to the rim. Clemson has lost Four in a row in the ACC. Louisville's won three straight, but without the starting point guard, Quentin Snyder, and that's the second travel against the Egyptian Mahmoud. Here's Snyder before the game. You see somebody who wants to play? Has never missed a game. His father uh, told Jody Demling, who told me, Jody, one of the great reporters in this area, said that uh, Scott Snyder said Quentin Snyder Middle school, junior high, high school, college had never missed a game until today. At some point, you get the flu, and that has not, not happened. Quentin Snyder. Kick out pass to Holmes to the corner for Mitchell. Back to Holmes for three. Hey, that's really nice. You know what? Holmes could have taken the first one. He was going to be under pressure, decided to move it a little bit, got it back, drilled it. This is the start they had against Notre Dame. They went out 10 against the Irish, and Notre Dame came back against them. They went up six on Virginia at home. Ended up losing the game. Louisville playing without its point guard, Snyder. Mitchell probing, and Donovan Mitchell has the first bucket. He's been in double figures eight of the last nine for Louisville. Now you can't let Donovan Mitchell in the middle. Donovan Mitchell is the kind of guy that shows in big games, played really well against Kentucky, fantastic uh, against Indiana, very well against Duke. You can't let him in the middle. Hard drive from Mitchell. This is Shelton Mitchell for Clemson, and he draws the whistle for Brad Brownell in his seventh season. One trip to the NCAA tournament, trying to get back there this year. Close, close, and more close. Brad, 
is a terrific coach. He worked for two great guys, Jerry Wainwright at Wilmington, Royce Waltman at Indiana State University of Indianapolis. He is very well schooled, tough coach, competitive defensively always. They just have not been able to get over the hump. Here's Rick Pitino, 16th season, 406 victories here, 760 overall. <laughs> He's not bad. Uh, and he <laughs> likes to play a lot of guys. So, look, you get the injury to Snyder, but Rick's willing to play a long bench. Just three minutes into this, two and a half minutes into this, I can see Patino really going to a hard, tough press. Even though they so. don't have Snyder, they can still, I wouldn't be surprised if they didn't pick up here and really get after the ball handler because ball handling for Clemson looks shaky right now. Well, Brad Brownell told us earlier today, we're willing to run at points with Louisville. We're not going to limp it up the court all day long, but certainly you don't want to get into a, a boxing match up and down. Jete sticks the jumper. These are wide open shots. Two things have happened in this game. Anytime that Clemson has wanted to go past a Louisville player, they have. And anytime they've moved the ball after probing, they've gotten wide open shots. This is against the eighth best field goal percentage defense in the country for Louisville. That's intercepted. Third turnover for the Cardinals. And Blossom game couldn't reel it in a little too long. I'm telling you, this is starting with a post feed, but look here, just a little drive. Guy falls down, over help, nobody rotates. Jete knocks it in. And it's, it started with a terrific post feed. Grantham to Jete. And it has continued. Now we're only three and a half minutes in. Now senior David Levich has checked in for Louisville only plays about eight minutes a game a former walk-on getting some early run as a whistle goes against Clemson best horse handicapper in the Louisville area David Levich is that right there is nobody under 25 years old that handicaps horses better than him according to everybody that I've talked to he's the baby face assassin if he gets a shot, he's gonna he's gonna if he clicks his heels, he's gonna knock it in, I promise you. You're saying you're gonna invite him on your bus to the to the derby next yeah, week? He's invited anywhere with me. Next year wow. it happens. There's a two for Louisville, eleven six. Can't let him in the middle of the lane. You cannot let Donovan Mitchell play in the middle of the floor. He's too strong, skilled, athletic. There's a travel against Gabe DeVoe, who's checked in. Brad Brownell, a little frustrated, but certainly looking for a close win for once after four straight ACC losses, and that kick ball will stay here. Telling you, it's three different baskets, three different ways driving it to the middle of the floor. If Clemson didn't want to listen to the scouting report, then they ought to listen to what's happened in the game. See what's happening in the game. Keep him out of the middle. Ray Spaulding found himself wide open. And this goes in and a foul. Mathieu creates space and gets a bucket. Well, he hasn't done much. Lost his starting job, Mathieu did. But I tell you what, he's the biggest guy out here. The strongest guy looking out here. Went up and got it done. You like sportsmanship? Yeah, it's all right. We're going to show you a little bit of that after this. Yeah. Join us. <laughs>Clemson getting together to shake hands and hug. I am so for that if it eliminates the after game handshake line. How many problems have we seen this year with that handshake? Can I shake line? your hand right now? Absolutely. A little pregame handshake. Yes, sir. That's nice. We're it's very ready. nice. Yes. Louisville, I mean, look at this. This Louisville team with an injured Snyder won three in a row. Where do they stand right now? Well, I, they're very good. However, that kid right there was and is the engine and without their engine I feel like they're disjointed offensively we've seen three turnovers we've seen them go too fast into a couple travels it doesn't happen when you have a point guard that was playing as well as Snyder was and I think these last four games Jason he's played his best basketball I'm just glad everybody got to see the lovable side of Dan Dockett's right there oh we you and me it's it's, it's magic I thought you were about to sing the first couple bars of Ebony and Ivory <laughs> Amazing. Go Cubs go and you can keep th that those that don't know Jason is the voice of the Chicago White Sox And those that don't know Dan Dockett is a huge intolerable Cubs fan First time ever we got to be intolerable uh -huh. 
right by him. DeVoe, the five, Blossom game, had it rejected. This is going to be a Louisville ball. Yeah, Rick Pitino didn't start coaching yesterday. I mean, he saw early in this game where nobody was coming over to help. That time, Blossom game went to the rim. Here comes two guys. But the problem was, Jason, one dribble and Clemson's getting past Louisville's guys. That has to shore up. Especially with Louisville's length. Fifth in the country in blocks, second in the ACC. Here's Mitchell thrust into the point guard roll. The entry feed intercepted, taken away. Here comes Elijah Thomas. And Clemson will swing it around. Off the bounce, Grantham to Strong. And the save by Spalding. Maybe not the shot Clemson wanted. No, but they wanted to keep the ball moving, but instead of driving, they settled. Levich getting rare minutes here early in the game. About eight minutes a game, as we said. Inside, Mathieng over the shoulder, missed it. Boy, that kills you because it was a terrific pass. Good movement, got the ball within two feet to your former starting center. Didn't get over the front of the rim. Thomas gives the screen into the corner. Oh my goodness! Blossom game with a strong drive. Oh man! Hey, they blocked it last time. They were blocking that one. He wasn't messing around. He gave his best jump, dunked it on the entire Commonwealth. And this is going the other way. A whistle against Louisville. Last time they blocked him. This time, not so much. That kid, you can tell, ultra talented. He has an NBA look to him. Not shooting the ball at all. But man, oh man, he has a good release. Keeps his shoulders forward. It'll come. Hey, he's in the Horace Grant territory. You talk about five straight 20-point games. He did it last year. He's on four straight right now. Hey, Clemson has had some really good players. I mean, I'm going back to when Tate's Lock was the head coach here. And Skip Wise was there. Tree Rollins, who Blossom, Blossom game just passed. Marquise Reed has checked in, the instant scoring guard, the transfer from Robert Morris. This is Reed, under 10 to shoot. Mahmoud went for the overplay. Blossom game, the offensive rebound. Smart, got it back out, didn't force against length. Skips it instead. DeVoe, extra pass, one more. Grantham. Blossom game maybe should have taken it, right? I think he should have. Uh, but again, Clemson, after the rebound, went right by a Louisville defender. And Mitchell turns it over. Thrust into the point guard roll. Decided to distribute there and gave it away. Read the kick out. And that three for Blossom game. Off penetration. The key here has been Clemson has not stopped with the ball. They've gotten the ball down quickly and continued the ball moving, driven, found the next. Hard to believe just the eighth three of the year for Blossom. He said is a 40% plus three-point shooter. Tony Hicks lipped it out for Louisville, which is three out of 15 this year from three. That's a strong start for Clemson. Oh, oh, one wait. more. That didn't go down for Grantham. Looking for a couple posters in the first eight minutes for Clemson. Adele off the dribble. Smooth. Uh, he's the guy has got to get going as well. You know, hey, look, your captain's out. Your guy is out. Somebody else has to step up. Mitchell has to this point. Adele has to be the next guy. Not been shooting the ball well from three. That time he cans his first two. Here's Elijah Thomas and a travel. Well, stars born, and it was born a few years ago. Blossom game right there. He's got all kinds of game right here. The drive where he just dunks it on the entire city. And then real recognize real here, yo. Two stars get together before the game. So Joe Lenardi this morning has 11 ACC teams in his current fictional tournament bracket. But you talk about a deep basketball league. Look out. This league is so good. Look at Pittsburgh. One and five. You know, Pittsburgh went in 
and beat Maryland at Maryland. Maryland is now, I believe, 16 or 17 and 2. I think 17 and 2 after their win this evening in, in Iowa. So that's the bottom team. And I'll tell you right now, doing Big Ten games, Clemson beats at least half, if not three quarters, of the Big Ten teams. So. Yeah, I do. I think that's a really this is a really good basketball team. And by the way, the last place team you're talking about, Pitt, has two 20 point scorers. Yeah, right. How about that? Yeah. Top two scorers in the league are on the worst team in the league, at least so far. So Louisville with just one offensive rebound, usually a very good second chance team. Just two points on second chances, and they'll get one here. Now, hey, look at that pit team, Artis and Young, 22 and 21. Florida State under Leonard Hamilton, who has been there forever. They're having a great year. The, the Bacon kid can really go. They play fast. They're guarding better, Florida State. But I still think it's North Carolina's league to lose. You think so? I do. Maybe a second chance here. Yes, indeed. Oh, boy. He was tremendous against Duke. Mahmoud was. He was very good out in the Bahamas. That was a heck of an effort by him. Started the last six games for Louisville. He's 14 out of 22 from the floor. The last five coming in. Reed sinks the three. That's a big answer. You know, the best defensive team you can make the case in the country is Louisville. You can make that case, all right? Well, they have miscommunicated four different times in this first ten minutes, nine minutes. That never happens. And, again, I think that's a function of not having Quentin Snyder out there. You think it hurts him that much defensively? I do. I, I think that Snyder is just one of those ballers. He's an all-around guy, plays both ends, not afraid of big moments, not afraid to tell a teammate where to be and how to do it, knows the scouting report. I mean, you look at Louisville's defensive efficiency last last five years, they're, they're top five, top ten in the country. Well, you know, Rick Pitino, that he, he, Rick Pitino said, he told our Seth Greenberg that he had to change a little bit because of the way games are called. Used to be a whistle against Hicks. Going back in the day, Rick Pitino fouled every possession. Just waited the refs out. They weren't going to call it. Now they play a little more position. There's that efficiency set. First in 2013 and only down to fifth the last five years. And the field goal percentage defense, they're holding opponents to under 38% this year. Though Clemson tonight is 7 out of 13. That is over 50% doing the quick math. Blossom game. Too strong. He's had some good looks this year. They just have not gone down. He shot that one awfully hard. He was pretty good position, but just got it too quick. That one pried away by Louisville and Jalen Johnson. V.J. King from the outside. Looks like Louisville may be overpassing a little bit. You think maybe trying to compensate for losing the point guard? I think that Louisville just looks unsure of itself offensively, whether it's overpassing, overpenetrating, Mamu driving up, dribbling the ball down the court. I think they look uncomfortable. Six turnovers already on an average of under 12 for the year. Mamu missed it well short. Now that didn't have anything to do with the point guard not being in. That was just an air ball. He did get out on Reed to stop the drive. Mahmoud, a young man who talked to his dad for the dad, uh, the Duke game, his dad said, look, you're not having enough fun. Tonight has not been enjoyable for Mahmoud so far. Gabe DeVoe with the blow by. That's all they've done. Great, great game plan by Brad Brunel. He recognized something in Louisville's defense and told his team straight drive every chance you get. And Louisville has absolutely not been able to stop the basketball. And Rick Pitino has a message for his Cardinals. Clemson with its largest lead on the road against Louisville. How about this drive by DeVoe? Well, you want to see why a coach is going to call timeout? Look at this open area right here. Nobody here. Now, nobody comes over and helps on the drive. There's a rule in basketball. Don't get split. Split means the offense goes between two defenders. Well, the whole team got split. And that's not the first time. That's not the second time. That's about the eighth time in this first, well, more than that, actually, in the first 12 minutes here. Once at 8 out of 15 from the floor, a bunch of close range shots as Adele goes high off the window for his fourth point. 
Dang Adele, the sophomore born in Sudan, moved to Australia when he was a child. Well, he's the guy. You know, Donovan Mitchell, you know what you're going to get. Adele has to have a big night tonight. Avery Holmes, who hit a long jumper earlier. Grantham with five to shoot. Some contact. Recovered by Grantham. He leans in. Drew Iron, and it's one and done as the foul goes against Clemson. Saturday on ESPN, two more great college hoop matchups for you. South Carolina coming off a big win. We'll take on Kentucky and Rub Arena. Then Cameron Indoor Stadium, the site of college game day. Miami against Grayson Allen and Duke. Three losses already in conference for Duke, including one here on Saturday. Both games also streaming live in the ESPN app. The obvious is, you know, Mike Krzyzewski, but it feels like something more than that's missing with Duke. You think so? It does. It just feels like there's a bunch of guys playing for Duke that haven't earned the right to be as, I'm not sure the right word. It's not cocky, but... Like Duke guys feel like they're already Duke players without having done anything. So the jersey. Yeah, I know, but he... Adele for two. He has six. You know, you, you, you these got this team here, Louisville. Two good things have happened. They haven't settled for a jumper. They went on the block, and then Adele settled for a jumper after some movement in the drive. Out of bounds to the Cardinals. Louisville mounting a comeback here at home. Clemson by three. Thank you, Chris. Now, Fran McCaffrey's going to need to cool down a little bit after a tough loss <laughs> just before we hit air. Louisville mounting a comeback 6-0 run in the last minute and change. And there is some of the rebounding action they can create with the length. And Louisville playing without its point guard, Quinn Snyder, injured in the Duke game on Saturday very early in the second half. You see him reaching for his left hip, and it's officially a hip flexor injury out two to three weeks, Louisville says. Stay in the game, tough kid. Stay in the game, let his team do a win. This first game he's missed in his career, grade school, high school, college, doesn't miss. Out of Ballard High School as Mahmoud gets fouled, and he will go to the free throw line. Snyder, by the way, same high school as DeJuan Wheat, the great Louisville Don't player. Don't even get me started. Ballard High School, that's legends. Ballard High School. Jeff Lamp, Lee Raker went to Virginia. I just got you started. You Male High School, Daryl Griffin, Dr. Dunk in Steam. Don't forget, where, where did Apollo High School is, I believe, where Jeff Jones went back in the day. I could be wrong about that. Where did Wes Unsold go? Did he go to Apollo? We're going to check on that for you. <laughs> Mahmoud is two Manuel for two. Forrest. I believe Manuel went to Ballard. Are you almost done? No, I, I'm a big fan of Louisville basketball over the course of my lifetime. It's a great, it, it could really have an NBA team, I feel like. Oh, I feel that way. This is a great basketball town. Junior Bridgman, who played here from East Chicago, Indiana, owns about three quarters of this town. The Wendy's, the buildings. <laughs> One of the best dudes ever. Blossom game left open. He sticks it. All right, did you see how Blossom game stayed with that shot? I said earlier he got a little quick. That time he slowed down, got into his stroke, and held his follow through moving forward. Came in just seven for 47 from three for the year, under 15%. And Adele is having a mammoth first half. And he has to. He absolutely has to. He's the key to Louisville winning this game. Because he has to score. He's got a rebound. He's got enough size to go into the lane. This one's coming to us. By the way, Wes also went to Seneca. Watch him stay with the shot. He blasting him, flashes. Now he's going to stay. Shoulders forward. He holds it right there. The one previous, he kind of got quick and got rid of it. That one he stayed with. And I'm telling you, you stay with a shot. It's going to go in more times than not. I mean, that's just a shocking difference in three-point yeah. shooting. 
from year to year. And talking to Brad Brownell, he said they're good shots. I, I feel like they're mostly good shots. Maybe rush some early. They need to show him his threes to this point. He has shot them three different ways. He has. He's been quick with one. He leaned back on another one, and he stuck the one right there. And good shooters shoot the ball the same way every time. We're talking about the possibility of the NBA here. Our NBA Friday doubleheader starts with a few. Two of the top teams in the West, KD and the Warriors, James Harden and the Rockets. You pick the MVP right now, 8 Eastern. Then 10.30 to Staples, Pacers and Lakers starts with NBA countdown at 7 and also streaming live on Watch ESPN and the ESPN app. One point game under 10 to shoot for Clemson. And a willing shooter, Holmes, with the miss. Yeah, willing bad shooter. That should not have gone up. And look at this. That's the first lead for Louisville with Donovan Mitchell. See how Clemson reacts. It's got to be blasting game, blossom game, or it's got to be this kid right here on the block. Elijah Thomas, the transfer, offensive foul. Yeah, I don't know about that. I, I don't know. I'm with Brad Burnell here. I think that was a flop. I, I, I'm with you on that one. I mean, look, you get the ball in the post. Here's how you tell. Thomas's body did not go forward. Yes, they bumped. Yes, there was contact. But the offensive players did not go through the defender. My opinion, that was big time flop. You don't think there was contact? In the there defense? was contact, but if the if the offensive player doesn't go through the defender, there's not that much contact. Oh boy, Grantham sent that away against Adele. Sent that away in the sixth row. These guys have athletes. I mean, they're oh, they're yeah. long arm. Clemson has real athletes. Levitt off the inbound of this. Clemson certainly able to run. Not that way. Well, you bring the ball down the side and you throw it to the same side post. Rarely, if ever, does it work out well. You reverse the ball and throw it to the post. Things go well for you. Louisville trailed 21-12 in this game. A little hesitation. <laughs> that is smooth. Oh, oh my oh, goodness. Hey, Donovan Mitchell just gave him the business right there. A little, how's your father? This was great. My, oh my. And there's a block. Matthew down low, and this is a foul call. Director, producer, Kim Belton, give us that bad boy again. That was sweet. A little hesitation right there. Goes with the right. How about it? He straightened up the entire Clemson team, the entire Clemson coaching staff, and every guy on that bench got straightened up. It was nice. They fired up. Oh, that was nice. Look at this. What are we doing? We have a whistle with the car wash inside. A little talking to for DeVoe and Levich. Levich's mom coached him in AAU. Where he got the handicap. That's a good call. Levitz has done this twice. You know, he says, okay, and then he went and did it again. Yeah, second time, you're going to get the whistle and you're going to get a seat. It's his second personal. Ryan McMahon checks in. Richard Freshman. Yeah, babyface Assassin Jr. comes in <laughs> for the Babyface Assassin. <laughs> Grantham from the outside rings it up and we're tied. Well, they put McMahon in a spin cycle right there. A little ball screen and screen to screen, or he was spinning around, couldn't get back to Grantham. First time in the game for McMahon, about five and a half minutes a game. Down the lane and a foul as Hicks penetrated. Well, Hicks is going to have to be involved here. He's quick enough both ends. You ready to go to the sock hop and do the hand job when we come oh, back? You know, I get out your hoop skirt. Dan Dockett, seven and dive after this. Here in the Commonwealth, 95% of the world's bourbon, 90% of the disco balls still being <laughs> produced, evidently, in Louisville. I know there's a big market for it. And the high five was created here by that 79 team.
they did they did the low five before and they said no 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 let's let's do the high five and there it was there's Wiley Brown right there high five it looks like Derek Smith right there. there's a conversation between those two about who invented the high five but you you need two people to invent the high five yes you, you do little known fact about Wiley Brown 1980 hey, national five, championship five. game he lost his thumb <laughs> he did he left it on the dinner tray, right? I mean, to, he, to be clear, it was already an artificial thumb. Yes, right, yes. Right. But you can't. Can you name another starting player in the NCAA championship game that was missing a digit? That is a that's a rare feat. We'll say. Off the tip, a whistle over on the sideline of the drive by Devoe, and it'll go against Louisville. But well, Louisville has really ratcheted their defense up, and what they've done is they've kept the ball on a side pretty good. And if you can keep the ball on one side or the other, then you can load your help side into the middle of the lane, and Louisville's been able to do that lately. How are they doing it? They're doing it because they're not letting the ball get reversed, and they're funneling it as the ball's coming down to whichever side they deem. Left, right, doesn't matter. And they're far more active with their hands. Lucky's got a foul for crossing the line against Jalen Johnson. A true story, back when Patino was at Providence and Kentucky, that was standard operating procedure right there. And still, in some ways, is in college basketball. Absolutely. Rarely do you see that call. Grantham just had to flip see, it over his head. Right there. There's a near intercept. See how they recover. DeVoe from the wing had it stripped away by Johnson. Nicely done. Again, the hands of Louisville. You know, they've committed a couple fouls because of the hands, but the hands are starting to get on the basketball, and they're starting to get deflection steals. Seventh turnover for Clemson in this first half. Mathiang got the roll. That's too easy. That's just a guy getting the ball, reading the defense, Mathiang, to get to the free throw line and taking it down the lane. Nobody big enough to jump block his shot. Got injured last year after 10 games, about seven points a game. He's down a little bit this season and has four for the Cardinals who've retaken the lead. Reed, challenge jumper, and Blossom game slid in. And B.J. King just got lost. He had blockout responsibility, and instead of fighting around, just kind of gave in. Already halfway to 20 for Blossom game, looking for his fifth straight. 20-point game of the foul against Grantham. There's something odd that you don't see terribly much. The foul for crossing the line. Hey, did he did at the end? That was really good by Spalding, and then all of a sudden he crossed. I'm sorry, Johnson, not Spalding. And all of a sudden he crossed. Pretty good call. You've been shopping for sporting goods recently, clearly. <laughs> Free throw good, and one more coming for King. Freshman who got the start today, former McDonald's All-American out of Cleveland. Two for two. There is Quentin Snyder, junior point guard, who is out. That's the reason King has been thrust into the starting lineup. Snyder's not smiled all night that we've seen. And why would you? It's miserable. I mean, you smile if you win, but it's just miserable when you don't get to be out there, you don't get to play. It's amazing how from one day to the next you don't feel a part of the team. When you're not playing, you just you feel uncomfortable. Reed against Adele. He flies in for two. Man, right past Adele. Now that... That hadn't happened in the last three or four minutes, but that's the way Clemson started this game. Just blow by, blow by, blow by the defender of Louisville. You think just team speed too much or bad footwork? I, you know, there's Mitchell again. Mitchell's done that. This is the fourth time he's done that as well. I, I think speed is one thing, and I think that normally everybody shifts over one and guards a similar man when you have your point guard without your point guard now you've got to guard sometimes quicker people blossom game funneled off to the side grantham too strong like on that end king was having to guard reed well king wouldn't normally guard reed mitchell wouldn't normally guard a point guard devoe 
You're saying just mismatches trickle yeah, down the line. They do. King finds some space. Man, he's going to be really good. You, you can just tell VJ King, slow start to his season, but he is going to be exactly what Rick Pitino has always won with a guy that's versatile on the wing, can play multiple positions, shoot it, defend it. Big comeback this half for Louisville, which was down 21 12. Into the trees, no good. Last four shots for Louisville have gone in to take a four point lead. And one last possession for the Cardinals here in the first half, you'd imagine. Adele for Mitchell for three. Largest lead for Louisville, and they're going to get it back. Twenty-four for Adele and Mitchell. Look at the overhelp. Reed overhelps on a drive that was going nowhere, leaving the best shooter in the building wide open. They are eleven of twelve. I'm going to go here, Mitchell. Finds a crease. Oh, my! <laughs> Mitchell and Adele have set fire to Clemson in the first half. Hey, how about this to end the half? Three, cause a steal, three. That's a pretty good 30 seconds for the best player in the building, Donovan Mitchell. Hey, he left the locker room not having missed a shot. He's going back not having missed a shot. Eight for eight in the first half. Alpha Romeo halftime report. Chris, Carol, Lafonso have it after these messages. If you ever dream of beating me, you'd better wake up and apologize. Muhammad Ali, and that's the way the Louisville Cardinals seemed in the last five minutes or so of that first half. 41-31 is your score. Louisville with the lead over Clemson. Dan Dockage has a toy here. It's uh, the Louisville Slugger Museum is here in Louisville, right? so you've gotten a gift. It's a Cubs bat, and we're not going to talk about that. It's uh, a Cubs 2016 World Series champ bat from right here in Louisville. Do you think Louisville has a chance to maybe be a champion this year? I'm not sure they're that good. I, I think a couple things have to happen. They have to shoot the ball really well. You're not going to shoot it like Donovan Mitchell shot at eight for eight. But their inside games, Matthew Yang et al. have to come on. <laughs> Get rid of that. None of that. Here's how it happened early. What? Free entry passes, rim runs. Yeah, the defense very lacking for Louisville early. But as we move forward in the game, they started keeping the ball on one side. But I do think this, Donovan Mitchell, the star of this game. I mean, eight for eight, got the first four buckets, scored the last six. And this was the last one. Or no, the second to last one, I'm sorry. And that was the last one. And to me, Matt Yang has to get going. He, he, he's big, he's strong, he's experienced. And if Louisville's going to make a real push nationally, I think it's on Matt Yang. Mango Matt Yang, four points in that first half. He did not start. And we'll tell you about our first half stats presented by Tic Tac. 10-0 run to close that half. Do you know anything about Tic Tacs? Do you know how many calories in a Tic Tac? Dan, please enlighten me. 1.9 calories in a Tic Tac, Mr. Smarty Pants. Thank you. That's Dr. Smarty Pants to you. Dang Adele with the miss. Mahmoud, the offensive rebound, and Louisville goes back to that second chance well. Well, Mahmoud is an important guy, but Dang, really important shooting the basketball. Mitchell finally missed. The first time he just settled for a jump shot, really, other than at the end of the half. Other Mitchell. Shelton Mitchell, too strong. Rim gets a block on Grantham and a foul called down low. Goes against Louisville. It's on Mitchell. That's his second personal. Grantham is a special kind of athlete. And 
you look at his size and his length, his shoulders, and he can shoot the basketball. You just saw his athletic ability. I mean, this is a guy that should be as good as there is in this league at the wing. He really should be. I mean, you, it, there's guys his size that can't shoot it. There's guys his size that can't handle it. He's can move side to side. You know, for 6 8, 35 percent three point shooter is not bad. No. Brad Brown also to us before the game. He said, look, we need somebody else. Maybe two somebody else for three other than Blossom game. Maybe Grantham's that guy. I think he is that guy. Just watching this half live. I don't think there's any question he's that guy. Mitchell shoveled it off. King <laughs> knocks it down. Told you in the first half, VJ King is going to be a special player here at Louisville. He lifts up. He knows how to play. He doesn't force things. He can shoot it over people. He's athletic. They played for a little while at St. Vincent St. Mary. They can play some basketball there. Blossom game, too short. Second chance, tough by Mahmoud. You know, first half, you know, Blossom game just shot that one short. First half, everything was off the drive for Clemson. Everything. Now you're taking jump shots after one pass and getting the get the rebound block but inside play I think is going to determine whether Louisville makes a serious run not only in the ACC ACC tournament but NCAA tournament as well. Jete to the rim. Matthew got a piece. And by the way you saw in the corner of your screen Louisville's got a very quick turnaround two o'clock on Saturday is their next game against Florida State and a big one. Yeah you know kids want to play. Coaches want to prepare but kids want to play. Let, worst thing for kids is they have to go to practice. Just Cut the film and let's go. Johnson off the spin. Adele wide open. Hey, that was nice. That was really nice by Johnson. Johnson at six foot nine, six foot ten, was able to make a quick spin, free himself, and make the right decision. Again, jump shot. That's not how no, Clemson was doing it in the first it was half. Not. They were blowing by Louisville almost at will, and now settling isn't the formula. Oh, Adele, drop off. Mathiang got under the hoop and a travel call. That's what I'm talking about. Now, that's the bad. Here comes the good. You're going to see Johnson. Watch him clear himself and then make the right decision. Man, that's good. I mean, again, I'm, you have to be consistent, and you have to be consistent from numerous spots. Johnson, good. Mathiang made a nice move, just traveled. You can't have it. That's part of the reason why they've had 20 wins or more in 14 straight seasons. And there's, a, there's a lot of reasons. That's one right there. They get their hands involved, and they're not afraid to play defense from every position. That's on Thomas, so that's his third. Louisville winners of three straight, including that victory on Saturday in the blockbuster against Duke, 78-69. They're plus seven in turnovers, for 18 Duke turnovers. There's a split by Mitchell into the corner again, and Adele is smoking hot. To the rim, the other way, and a two and a foul coming for Clemson and Thomas. <laughs> Heck of a pass by Mitchell. Adele is on fire. And wait a second, are you smiling, Quentin Snyder? That was like a little bit. Of course. I was, I'm hurt and I want to smile, but I can't smile, but I want to smile. My head just spun around. That was Linda Blair right there. Last I saw you, you were Gene Stapleton. Now you're Linda Blair. Mitchell, the feed. Mathiang leaning for two. You said it. There he is. He's got to be the guy. He really does. He, Mahmoud, Mahmoud is good, but Mathiang is big. He's fast. And a block called after the ball trickled off the rim. That's a late call on Mathiang. Well, the reason I said Mathiang's fast, because I thought he moved really quickly to affect the shot. I'm not saying whether this was a foul or not. You can make the case 
that it is a foul because you're going to see Matthew. But look at him move real fast. Gets over there. I think that is a foul. The Louisville fans don't like it, but he put the offensive player at a disadvantage getting there late. But you can agree that the booing likely wouldn't have happened had the whistle come on time. Without question. The referee clearly was waiting to see if the ball went in or not. Like Beth Yang moved really fast, and you see right there contact. No whistle, no whistle, which infuriates the locals, and it should. Doesn't make coaches terribly uh, thrilled. The ball either. knows. The ball knows. You're saying the Two ball actually. Throws. The ball has spirit. The ball, the ball is a breathing organism. Chalk another one up for science from Dan Dockage. Mitchell. That wouldn't fall. And let's see, it's going to be a foul on the rebounding action against Clemson. I'll tell you why the ball knew, because the referee was not going to call a foul if the ball didn't go in. Once it didn't go in, he called a foul, which means the referee really didn't think it was a foul. So the ball is like, hey, if you don't think it's a foul, I'm not going in. That head spinning thing is contagious, I think. <laughs> it's true. Every person out there that's played a ton of basketball is nodding their head. They're going to get contact to get Jete prior to the catch by Mathieu. Whistles galore, made shots galore for Louisville. It's a 16 point advantage for the Cardinals. Leading 51-35. We take a look at tonight's fast relief brought to you by Zantac. Well, you get the ball in the middle of the floor, really good things happen. And Louisville has done a really nice job of finding finding the corner. Look at Mathieu. And finding the basket as well. We've seen Mathieu. We've seen Jalen Johnson here in the second half. Now the perimeter is pretty good for Louisville. That's a bad call. That's a bad call. I was watching that. I was watching Levitch, and the referee anticipated a harder back screen on Levitch. Just because people touch doesn't mean it's a foul. Well, it's tough for officials, though. They do have to anticipate certain things happening on the court, right? Why? Why not just watch what happens on the court and make a call? Well, if everything was new every time, their brains would be mush. Mitchell, no good. You got to put it in the basket somehow, right? You got to know what's coming in some ways. Mitchell is called for an offensive foul. Now he's just out of his mind, Matthew. Look here. All right, there's a little back screen. There, there's no movement there. Maybe a little shoulder. No, no advantage, disadvantage. And I think the referees thought that Jate was going to turn into him harder. And when he didn't, the referee had already blown the whistle. That's the bad side of anticipating. I don't know why. You just see the play, make the call. Easy as that. Easy as that. We're going to send you to official school. Levin for three. Told you, you let him get his heels clicked. He's as good a shooter as you're going to find. He may be the best walk-on shooter in America. I got to think about that. He's over 50% for the year, that's for sure. He was doing that with, what's that kid, Hawkins, Dominique Hawkins, is that his name at Kentucky? Comes off the bench. They were in the same AAU team. It's like you knew the promo was coming. South Carolina, Kentucky, 6 Eastern at Rupp Arena. Then college game day site, Miami and Duke. Cameron Indoor, 8.15 Eastern, Saturday primetime, live on the ESPN app. And then watch ESPN. You anticipated the promo. Well done. You learned something today. That is out of bounds. All right, where was it out of bounds? It was out of bounds on the baseline because Louisville has forced the ball to the baseline. After the first seven or eight minutes, Louisville has stopped allowing the ball to get to the top of the key. Three straight turnovers for Clemson, and the young center has erupted here in Louisville. against Indiana earlier in the season and look you're playing without your starting point guard Quentin Snyder and you played a tough schedule already you would think there's a possible letdown after Duke that hadn't happened tonight. Yeah not at all early they were a little bit sluggish but you know usually Clemson starts out well we documented that 6-0 10-0 against Notre Dame 6-0 against Virginia the other night. Made four of their first five shots tonight they opened this half one for six Levitch feet square. Tipped by Johnson. Matthew Yang had it pinballed away and he saves it. 
Mitchell to dump down. Johnson the finish. That was really good by Mitchell. He didn't settle for a three. He drove it, didn't get out of control, and found the next guy. So many kids get out of control when they take the ball into the lane. Mitchell just stayed low, kept his dribble tight, got it where it needed to be. I'll tell you about playing well, settling into a new job. This has been terrific tonight for Mitchell. Absolutely terrific. It hasn't bothered him at all. Added duties as a ball handler. B.J. King got to start, but Mitchell has accepted it and done what great players do, step up his game when needed. One turnover the last, oh, I don't know, about 23 minutes or so. Levich into the corner. No good for Mitchell. Another second chance for Louisville. Johnson had it rejected by the rim, and he is fouled on the way up. Boy, that is great hustle. And when you combine that with fantastically strong shoulders and long arms, and you hustle, a lot of this is going to happen. You got big, strong guys knocking the ball up and around and going after it. That's what I'm saying. Louisville, when Quentin Snyder comes back, has enough defense, has enough quickness, has enough savvy, but these big guys are going to make all the difference in the world, including this kid, Jalen Johnson. Well, Clemson has struggled to rebound the ball this year. They're yeah. the only ACC team with a negative rebounding margin, and Louisville now has nine offensive rebounds this game. Foul was on to Bo, and the free throw goes down for Johnson, the junior out of Michigan. Mom Janetta was a tremendous shot blocker at Wisconsin. 130 in one season back in 1989. Jalen Johnson takes a seat. Tell you what. I'm going to keep talking about the kid because he's going to be really important. But Matthew Yang really playing with enthusiasm. And he's talking. He's clapping. I mean, big guys generally don't do that. And the more enthusiasm you can play with, the better. It's been a lively game in the final 10 minutes of the first half and the start of the second half for the Cardinals, certainly. Took him a minute. And I thought they looked very uncomfortable to start the game offensively. We documented it with six turnovers early, three minutes, but since then, smooth sailing. Well, and look, for Clemson, too, this was the game that Brad Brownell felt like oh, maybe they're down a guy and we can get one of those close wins, steal one on the road, something like that. And it, he's had to reevaluate as the game's gone on. You know what's so tough? You talk about close losses. Man, we we're right there. We've lost four in a row, and the only one that got away from a little bit was at Georgia Tech. But the truth of the matter is, the more you lose, the more you get used to losing. The more you lose, the more you wait for losing to come. And when somebody comes at you, sometimes you break. And I thought the excellent play of Louisville made him break a little bit. Doesn't mean it's over, but it just made him break in the middle of the game a little bit. Well, it's tough in this league, too. It's such a deep ACC this year. You can go on a run of seven straight games with an opponent you shouldn't beat as Grantham sinks the three. And that's the kid. You know, I mentioned to Matthew Yang for Louisville, but Grantham, he's long. He can shoot the basketball. He has good skill, plays with his head up. Got 11 tonight. Junior out of Hargrave Military Academy by way of Martinsburg, West Virginia. Levich the save. Clemson tries to scramble the Jets to recover. Mitchell left it short. Second chance. Matthew Yang on the doorstep. And a good thing about Matthew Yang, that entire possession, when everybody else was losing their mind out on the perimeter, he was hanging out around the rim and it paid off. Another jump, jump shot, shot for yeah. Clemson. Yeah. Another jump shot. That's not how Clemson started this game. Four straight losses for the Tigers, who opened strong in the non-conference season, trying to avoid a fifth straight, but Louisville has gone on a massive run. Getting popcorn dumped on him by Bill Walton. <laughs> yes. Is that what you showed me in that game? I did. How about that? Yeah. So shocking. What a team. Adele with the make. It's a 22 point game for Louisville. Clemson, remember, led 21 12 tonight. Well, they 
they went totally away from their game plan of spreading it, driving it, driving it some more. And and drive and kick, Grantham. How about the inconsistency of both him and Blossom game shot? I mean, the last time Grantham shot it over pressure, nailed it. This time he shot it into the right flank. They're 14th in the ACC in three point shooting percentage, and that's part of the reason why as Johnson gets mauled. And he will have two free throws out of the way. Yeah, but Johnson just stepped in so strong on Elijah Thomas, and Thomas had no. No chance, you know, on the block, Johnson was competing. Thomas was just playing. And Johnson abused him. Fourth foul against Thomas, the mid-year transfer from Texas A&M, and he will have to take a seat. All right, Clemson comes in, the 11th ranked strength of schedule in the country, 27th in the BPI. Yeah, they, if they lose tonight, they go to 1-5 and five in the ACC, but there is still some tournament potential in the predictors on this team. You loved them the first eight minutes tonight. Uh, I thought they played how they should play. Drive it. That's going to be against Mitchell, his third. The one thing early in the game, and I think we mentioned it, was Clemson's ball handling looked shaky. They were able to one-two drive to the rim from about 20 feet. But their ball handling across the top, and I think we've seen some of that today. I think it's kind of, I think Louisville's defense, once they got their hands active and kept the ball on the side, it really affected Clemson. Reed, the Robert Morris transfer, gets the roll. He has seven in his first and the second half. Here's a guy who can provide some quick offense off the bench. Marquise Reed for Clemson. Off the overplay, Matthew had it ripped away. This is where if you get loose, Rick Pitino's going to sit them all down. There's no question. We'll go about two more possessions, and that's going to be it, particularly if they score here. A little help from Levich to knock it out of bounds. He always looks unhappy too, doesn't he? Patino? No, Levich. What's he got to be unhappy? About? I don't know. He looks serious. He's got some fire in his in his eyes. Yeah, he looks serious here, and he's Reed the jumper. He has four in a row for Clemson. Well, nothing easy there. He was defended pretty well. He just lifted up. Tony Hicks got a hand on him. And there is the timeout from Rick Petito to share his melancholy with his team members. Take a look at Louisville's BPI heading into tonight's game powered by Microsoft Cloud. It's the basketball power index. What goes into that is pace of play, opponent strength of schedule, the site you play. So number nine in the country is very nice for the Cardinals at 15 and three. Well, you know, they went to the Bahamas and they played Wichita State, who obviously is having a really good year. Baylor, who got to number one in the country, and they had Baylor down 18. They beat Purdue, had Purdue down big time, and then Kentucky, you know, Virginia. I mean, what are you going to do? It's a pretty good schedule, and Louisville has not backed down from anybody and Rick Pitino I know is really pleased with the effort of this team. Well, we're talking about BPI as well. There was that summit that the NCAA has come out. Maybe they're going to reevaluate the RPI. Some folks that you know Kevin Paga and Michigan State part of that group that went in to maybe enlighten the NCAA on something new. ESPN and the BPI involved and Mathieu got the roll. Maybe it went in one way or the other. Jeff Sagarin's involved in that. And, you know, Jeff Sagarin lives with about 50 cats. There's <laughs> 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 a layout for Reed. And, and at least 35 computers. Oh, yeah. You're, you're seeing cats crawling on computers. Oh, there's cats in trees in Sagarin's life. And, 20 I love Sagarin. I've known Sagarin forever, and he's a good friend, but, man, he's got a lot of cats. Do you say is a good friend or was? Probably not so much anymore. Mm. Adele 
got knocked over. He'll go to the free throw line. Let, let, let's talk a little shooting here. You, you have to stay with the shot. Now watch Blossom game here. His shoulders are in front of his feet. He's on balance. He stays with the shot. Okay. Now let's look here. A little jab step. Leans back. And look. He tries to stay with the shot. But truly he's just faking it. He. You get your shoulders out in front of your feet. Think about it like this. What sport would you ever throw a ball, a dart, whatever, leaning backwards? None. You bowl, you go forward. You hit a tennis ball, you go forward most times, at least to serve. When you shoot, you go forward. You pitch, you go forward. Throw a pass, you go forward. Don't go backwards on your shots. Crazy. A little bandage now on Blossom Games' hand, but I, the difference between basketball and bowling is there's not somebody in your face trying to compel you backward, right? Well, I'm talking about on open shots. I mean, those two are open shots. <laughs> You've never bowled with my family. My family would get down in the lane and get in a stance against you, didn't? Is that after they deal with the leaves? <laughs> Cross court. Oh, he's Reed again. It. Oh, yeah. He's feeling it. Uh, Levitch might want to run down this end of the court because he's running right in front of his coach and he's going to get an earful. Mathiang finds himself open. Offensive rebound again. They do it as well as anybody in the country and another second chance for Louisville. Three quarters, 75% of offensive rebounds, of shots taken, go to the opposite side. The ball's taken from the left, it bounces to the right. There's Johnson strong enough to play through contact and get it on the glass. He battles two people, and I'm glad the referee did not call over the back there. He just went up and got it. And he was tougher than the two offense, or excuse me, defensive players for Clemson. Nearing a double double for Jalen Johnson. Another tip ball and nearly recovered by Hicks in the corner for Louisville. They are fifth in second chance points in terms of power conference teams, and they've made a living doing it at points tonight. Man, you can switch those two guys. Mitchell sinks the jumper. All right, Johnson got beat on the crossover by Mitchell, but Matthew Yang and Mitchell just switching ball screens, getting down in the stands. You're probably not going to get by them because they're both willing to move their feet. Johnson had to track it down. Again, Jate gave it up. Hicks for to shoot. Oh, the leader. Just let's get everybody involved. Mitchell the other way. Reed cools off that time. How about the team game, though, in the final 22 minutes or so we've seen so far for Louisville, now driving by everybody like Clemson was doing in the first 10 minutes. How good was that? How good was that by Mathieng? Mathieng just took away Mitchell. Mitchell thought he had a bucket. Mathieng just had hustled down the court and put himself in the middle of the lane, took away any transition. Hey, Dockage, what do you say? We're going to talk some baseball today. <laughs> Let's do it. Cubs go, are going to go. win today. Go, Cubs, go. Cubs, go. This day in history, Edgar Allan Poe was born, Janis Joplin was born, me and Bobby McGee. Dolly Parton was born, Notre Dame did something real big, and Ernie Banks goes into the Hall of Fame. Dan Dockett, you're so happy right oh, now. Oh, that was a good day when Mr. Cub, let's play two, went in the Hall of Fame, started as a shortstop, became a first baseman, and everybody wanted to be sweet swinging Billy, Billy Williams, Ernie Banks, Glenn Becker, Don Kessinger. Now we all want to be Anthony Rizzo, Javier Baez, Addison Russell, Chris Bryant. You didn't mention Dexter Fowler. He's already been forgotten because he's gone. Is that right? I love Dexter Fowler, and I hate that the Cardinals got Dexter Fowler. Saw that streak that ended at the hands of Notre Dame, UConn's women. All right, let me ask 92. you. Yep. Let me ask you a question. Who's the greatest coach in team sports history? 
greatest coach in team sports history. My point is, you can make the case that Gino Oriama. You could. You could. With what he has done, look at those two streaks. It's, it's amazing what he has been able to do. You, again, you would have you would have to factor in the competition, and UConn is well above everybody else. Why? But he's part of the reason. Why? Everybody has the same amount of scholarships in other sports. UConn's not great. Uh, other than men's basketball, they won some titles. No, no, no. They, they're fine. But I mean, football's all right. Baseball. Eh. I mean, they don't do a whole lot. So why are they so dominant over, let's say, uh, Ohio State that's really good in baseball, football, basketball? Why are they so dominant over Louisville, who, you know, top ten both? Why? It's a strong argument. It really is. Well, I just think Gene Oriama, the job he's – I think Gene Oriama could coach any basketball team, professional, college, whatever, and be ultra, ultra successful. You do. I do. Men's, women, I don't care. Because there's a lot of talk of, hey, college football coaches can't be NFL coaches anymore. I guarantee you this, if Urban Meyer goes to the NFL, he's going to be successful as long as he goes to a team with a good quarterback. Well, that's, that's the whole idea. thing, right? Oh, boy, there's another one for Louisville this time, B.J. King. I really like him. I, I, I think he is tremendous. I think he has grown up this year from the Bahamas. He's more confident where he's supposed to be. He talks more. He's more enthusiastic. Now playing a bigger role with the injury to Snyder as Holmes ticks that three. And a technical foul coming after the play. Johnson and Thomas having a standoff. There's another technical foul. See ya. Good for Mike Roberts, the referee. Just, hey, look. He told them to stop. They didn't stop. They kept trying to be, you know, tough guys. So just go to lock with Good for Mike Roberts. No, Mike Roberts threw him out. He did. Yeah, the other guys, the other guy is kind of talking. But Mike, I've known for a long time. You're going to see Mike. He is a police officer, Kent, Ohio, and he's underneath the basket, and he's going to come and tee him up. Both guys are teeing him up. And then Mike finally, after they just won't stop, technical out. Yeah, at some point you just have to take it to the game. Yeah, you do. Just get out. We don't need anything else. No big deal. Here comes Mike. Why don't you get the explanation here? So Dan's getting the explanation on the ejection. You just saw it. A game that's gotten chippy every once in a while. And there's Thomas leaving the premises. Explanation. He said they didn't want to play fair. They just wanted to keep talking and talking and talking. He may throw a fan out here, and I wouldn't blame him. I, again, you can do preventative officiating for a long time, and then at some point, if they're not going to stop, you're giving them the chances. To you. Adios. Really not that hard. It, it really isn't, because as Mike came over and told me, all right, they swap at each, swap, swat at each other. Now they're jawing. There's Tech. And they won't stop. So Mike, good for him. It's a good ref right there, really good ref. I've watched him come up 15, 20 years ago through the Mac, and he's as good a ref as there is, and as fair a ref as there is. He is not a guy that comes into a game with any kind of motivation other than doing the best job that he can. And that's shown by the fact that he gave him both time before he threw him out. Right, right. He didn't overreact there. He just said, hey, stop. You don't want to stop? Adios. And there she goes. Johnson and Thomas both disqualified from the game. And we'll see what the last six minutes bring. Spalding turns into the corner. And everything is working for Louisville. Tony Hicks with a pinball. And now Brad Brownell chatting with his team. 
His Blossom game takes a seat. We haven't seen anything from him in the second half. No, not a thing. He hasn't taken the ball to the rim. He hasn't been aggressive. And like most of their team, he's just kind of gone away. This has not been what Clemson has done. Clemson has fought pretty hard. They've just had their spirit taken. I think at the end of the half by Mitchell's two threes. I mean, the one that made it 41 31 was the backbreaker. Yeah, we were going along with a four point game. Mitchell hit a three to make it seven. Mitchell hit a three at the buzzer to make it ten. And second half has been nothing. It was 31 31 until that run as Tony Hicks is making his second half of it. You said it earlier, Clemson's only really bad game in the ACC was the Georgia Tech loss. Yeah, and you know what Tony Hicks is doing? Tony Hicks is making a little statement here to get some playing time to where he'll be the point guard and Donovan Mitchell can stay at his natural position. And that's a foul on Spalding. Here's the shot we were talking about in the first half, the couple from Mitchell. Well, he overheld. He's already six for six. That makes him seven for seven. Then after a steal, it went from a four-point game to a ten-point game. And so often we talk about the, the first five minutes of the you know, second half. I, I disagree. I think the last two minutes, three minutes of the first half are as important, if not the most important, in a ball game. It can change your message in the locker room, no, right? Exactly. Exactly right. It can change your message. The message at four would have been what? Hey, they were fighting to stay with it. Message at ten is a little different. Hey, calm down. We can still play with wow. them. There's Tony Hicks again. All in the second half, nine points. What don't we like about him? Well, <laughs> you take this tape and run with it if you're the Hicks side. Transfer came in, mature kid. Transfer Talking. from Penn. Holmes gets Adele in the air. Jate the rebound. Reed tees it up again, and that was way off. That's a guy that at one stretch was pretty hot in this game. Well, Louisville, 12 in the country. This is a big game for them, too, because four of the next five are on the road. And they'll pick one off here this evening at the Young Center. Oh, Mitchell still going to work and a tip for Mahmoud. Yeah, there's no answer down there. You know, if I'm if I'm Brad Burnell, we gotta have a we gotta have a team meeting here. We, we we've got to figure out, you know, how much do we want to play because that last play right there, Grantham made no effort whatsoever. That's a block called on the drive by Jete, running over King. Well, nothing, nothing but Louisville left-handed and then a little touch, huh? What not? No problems. Mike Roberts took care of all that. He on a little one-night trip through history. It was the era of good feelings before the game. Handshakes, hugs for everybody, and then it got a little bellicose here in the second half. Ejections of both Thomas and Johnson. And I mean, they say history moves fast. It certainly did tonight. Yeah, and I don't even know what bellicose means, but I actually do. I had 30 days to a more powerful vocabulary as a kid. But I, you know, what to me, did you get to? To me, that's why three. To me, that's why we should only do the hugs and the handshakes before the game. We don't, we don't need it after the game. The whole the whole handshake line is more problematic because it's so phony. Nobody wants to do it. You just want to get off the court. Let's hug and handshake before the game, after the game, wave to each other, and get off the court. See, you going to war on the handshake line is bellicose. Good job. I agree. Context clues. Three for DeVoe, and there's Jerron Blossom game, who's not scored in the second half. And you see him feeling that wrist over on the bench. He had some tape on it, and he has not played a significant role at all here in the second half. He's still holding on to it. Yeah, and unfortunately, it's his right wrist. So, Wait, you think the handshake lines are good? How many problems have we seen this year with a handshake? Like Jimmy Patsos was handshaking nobody the other day, which for Sienna, which was the greatest psychotic coaching thing maybe ever. And he was nodding as he was handshaking nobody. If you haven't seen it, I, it's been a long year for Jimmy. They're not. 
No, the NFL no, supposed but, to have a good year. They're not playing too well. I know, but if we if I can do one thing in broadcasting, that's get rid of the handshake line, man. So that's the one that's the only thing, thing I want to do. I thought you just wanted this chair and then all the uh, the kids in the world to get together and sing, right? Wasn't that number one on your list? Uh, oh my goodness, Louisville. That's my guy. BJ King. Handshake line. When did that start? It was not around when I played. You're still on that, huh? You don't want people to be nice to each other. It's not it. It's Saturday. Just I have to do a promo. Oh, Pardon me, Dan. Excuse me. Saturday on ESPN, number 24, South Carolina, number 5, Kentucky at Rupp Arena. Then Cameron Indoor Stadium, Grayson Allen and Duke against Miami in the big ACC game, the ESPN app. And watch ESPN will have them for you, too. Do you have more to say? Sorry, uh, who would you on. rather have, Lonzo Ball or De'Aaron Fox as your freshman point guard? Lonzo Ball. Man, I like them both, but I think so too. Lonzo Ball is really good. And if you recruit him, you get his family too. Yeah, I wouldn't be mad about that either. Too. Yeah. But De'Aaron Fox, wow. 58% tonight. And that's with a slow start. This was a real slow start. Turning the ball over, looking unsure. Next thing you know, it it was lights out. And VJ King, this kid was big time. Has been. There he is again, VJ King, with double figures in the second half. Five in double figures for the game for the Cardinals, up to 90. In the old days of college basketball, I don't know, 10, 15 years ago, Clemson would be practicing when they went home. Yeah. I mean, you don't do that after losses, just for losses. But you do that after losses when your team gives up and goes away. And Clemson has just gone away. They, they, the fight hasn't been there throughout the second half. And credit Louisville because they have smelled blood and just taken it right at them. This was a 10-point game at halftime. That was a 10-0 run to close the first half for Louisville. So a 31-31 game has ballooned to a 30-point lead for Louisville. Why not one more three? I would think. There's an offensive rebound. Matthew hammers the rim. Hey, a smile from Quentin Snyder over on the bench. Feel for the kid. He's injured. He wants to be on the floor. He's been gritting his teeth all night long watching his team run away. Impressive, on the other hand, for Louisville to come back from a rough start in this game. DeVoe off the spin. He's met by the 6'10 Mathieu. It's a good game for Mathieu. I'm anxious to see how he backs it up Saturday, 2 o'clock, Florida State. It's the type of game where he just beats you a lot. Well, or can. He can, yeah. Louisville has the walk ons on the floor. Tyler Sharp has joined the proceedings. Jay Henderson as well. And some final handshakes as Louisville sprints away from Clemson 92 60. You said it exactly right. Bad start by the Cardinals got down 6 zip. But man, oh man, sprint away is exactly what they did. Dan Dockett, Jason Benetti saying good night to KFC Young Center. Louisville wins it big 92 60. Sports Center is now as we send you to John Bouchagross and John Anderson. Guys, take it away.